Mike. Good day to everybody in TV land. This is Mike Hitner, President of Historic Point Boss, and I'd like to invite you to the Home Show. Today we're at the Home Show in Wisconsin Rapids. That is on the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of March, and we're recording this on Saturday, but uh, a little background about the home show and everything like that. Uh, Central Wisconsin home builders were instrumental in getting the Wakely project, uh, Historic Point Boss, off the ground about 31 years ago when uh, people were looking, especially the mill at that time, was looking to tear down the building because of the hazards of it. The Central Wisconsin home builders came forward, and some of their members especially, and put down money to show them that they were really serious about preserving this Wakely house that was a very historic structure that Dave Ingle had written about in the newspaper. So that we got to thank the Central Wisconsin Home Builders for this great effort they put into it to make it possible that today we're working on it down there at our site. I'd like to invite you out to the site anytime. We got March 25th is our sugar bush coming up and we've got other events. We got a calendar events on our website, check that out. But uh, thank you for listening and by the way, I've got another appointment. I have to go. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Matthews. I'm part of uh, uh, Historic Point Bass. We're a uh, nonprofit organization that tries to preserve history of uh, uh, Point Bass and the lives of uh, Robert and Mary Wakely. Back, they, they came to this area, Robert Wakely first started coming to this area in uh, 1837 and then he came with his family in 1841, about, about that, and he built a house, one of the very first frame houses in this area, built in 1841. So we welcome you to the home show. We have many different uh, displays here. Uh, historic tools and um, making uh, thread and cloth and quilts and woodworking obviously. Right now I'm working on making a mallet for the probe because uh, um, most people are aware of the fro being used to make shingles. Um, this is a fro. It's used to take on a log or a large piece of wood and uh, and basically what you do is you take this big mallet on the end of the wood and you need it you need something heavy to start it and you and here you know like if this was on, on a piece of log like that you would hit it and it allows you to, to split that log very consistently and you use it a lot for shingles but I demonstrated a lot for using uh, using it uh, mainly to make rough furniture because sawed wood was very expensive back then. Uh, you had to make something else and trade for that sawed wood. So if you could do it yourself, you were way ahead. So they would split these logs and then either use uh, a draw knife such as this to, to smooth it out or a plane, and uh, also this is a spoke shape you can use for, for a smaller thing. Anyway, uh, that allowed them to make very, very usable furniture without the cost of paying someone else for sawed lumber. Now, uh, I'm just about done with this. What I'm doing is making a making a mallet that I can save my handle. I'm putting a dowel all the way through to hold the, hold the, hold the handle to the mallet. So in the future, either if the, if, the, if the mallet breaks or the handle breaks, I can replace that easy enough. But it's like, because this takes, a, takes a, a, a tremendous blow every time to the edge of the throw because it hits it like this. So it hits on that metal. So that's why I chose a piece of oak that had a big knot in it. So hopefully that holds everything together so, I, so it works out. That's what we're doing today. Thank you. I am Larry 
Knudsen. I am a member of Historic Point Mass in Macoosie, Wisconsin. Uh, it's a, uh, one of the first homesteads in this area, and we try and recreate things from the 1840s to the 1860s. And part of the experience of being in Point Pass is learning about history. And I like to uh, tell people that uh, we do not give our ancestors enough credit for their ingenuity and the hardiness uh, in what they did in, in the past era. Some of the interesting items that I find personally uh, is, is uh, looking for different things that uh, people are not familiar with today. And that's what I have here today is a what is a table. Uh, my what is a table is if trying to have people find out what it is and or the use of what the item is. And I guess I'll start at this time, go from this end down. Uh, this item here uh, is rather large. It is called a bomb shoe. There is an illustration from the 16th century in Holland showing two horses pulling a hay wagon with bog shoes on. These were extremely popular down in Florida and of course in Wisconsin and our area because of the boggy soils. They would go on the horse's hooves, the cocks from the uh, horse's shoes would fit in the here and then it would be strapped over the hook to hold it on. I believe personally that this was not to aid the horse as much as it was to keep the protecting the crop, uh, the hay crop that was on the field, uh, without them the horses would put large indents in the field and make it rather rough. With them they would help protect the soils. So uh, I guess uh, my, my understanding is the horses did take to them very easily so they weren't uh, difficult for the horses to use. This item here is what I call a Sawyer's Wedge. It wasn't used extensively in the Point Mass era, Point Mass being again from 1840 to 1860. It was used probably more about the 1880s when crosscut saws were starting to be used for falling trees in the logging industry. They would take a crosscut and saw into the tree, and then when they got in deep enough, this wedge would be put in behind the crosscut so that if the wind blew the tree a little bit, it wouldn't pinch the saw blade. Also, being in there, you could direct the fall of the tree by turning the wedge one way or the other and putting it in a different location. But Sawyer's wedges always have this little hole in there. Uh, the reason is this logging was typically done during the winter, and so when they would saw the tree and have it in there, when the tree would start to fall over, they would run back away from the tree. This hole in there, they would have a cord to run from this hole to their uh, belt or the bibs, whatever they happen to be wearing. And so then when it fell out of the tree and fell in the snow, they could just take the cord and lift it up and go on to the next tree. They didn't have to dig around in the snow. These are extremely hard to find today because when the chainsaw came out, of course, you couldn't use them because a chainsaw would kick back and ruin your chain. So they uh, were discarded or made into other items and so on. So extremely hard to find today the iron ones. They do make them in plastic and they put the chainsaw. So at the same use, just uh, in a different material. These were typically, this one happens to be industrially or factory made. Uh, typically they were made by local blacksmiths. So. We would like to thank our sponsor. from Historic Point Bass. I'm one of the blacksmiths out at Historic Point Bass. And I'm here just to show you some of the things that I use uh, in my blacksmithing operations out there. And the first thing I'd like to show you is a swedge block, which is this big block of metal right here. And as you can see, it's got a shovel, a big ladle, and a, and a small ladle. When the, when the metal is heated up, 
it would sit in here like that and you would take a hammer and beat on it to get it to conform. Now this metal has to be cherry red in order to bend it because it's it's quite thick and a blacksmith in 1840, the years that I am a blacksmith, we use whatever metal we can get and I'd like to just talk about that a little bit. This piece of metal that I have in my hand right here, a friend of mine called me and he had a fuel oil tank, a half a fuel oil tank he wanted me to give away to somebody and I took it and I'm making shovels out of that fuel oil tank. This is a piece of copper flashing from, uh, from a roof job and it was left over and I made a spoon out of it. You can see that it fits right there and the spoon just needs a handle put on it and it needs to be straightened out with a hammer like this hammer right here to take the little bumps out of it. Now I said I use any kind of metal that I can get. If you look at this right here, you can see that this is a peach can. And what I did is I made a spoon out of the peach can. So the blacksmith back in 1840, he really didn't care what kind of metal you had. It was a lot easier to use metal over than it is to try and, and melt it down and make your own out of ore that was found in the swamps close to us. I brought a bunch of different hammers here and I'll just show you a couple of them. This hammer right here is, is somebody if you don't like them this would be the one that you'd let them use. It weighs a ton and after you swing it with your hand for about 10 minutes your hand is shot but it's called a flattening hammer. You can see that the ends are flat and if you wanted to flatten this piece of metal out right here it would be very easy to take this hammer and hit this and flatten it back out and start over. This hammer here is kind of a unique hammer. If you ever used a carriage bolt on anything, what I use this for, and I'm not sure what it was made for, but I use it for carriage bolt holes. I take a, a punch, make my round hole, and then I square the hole up with this, depending on what size carriage bolt I have. And then I can fit the carriage bolt in there and it stays in the metal and I don't have to worry about it. But that's kind of a unique hammer. When I was well, when I was in this hammer here, and especially my unit, so long as it was black, you could go online and pick up whatever you want. The hammer made just for the swedge block. As you can see, it's rounded, so it fits around and comes around. And then on this end, it's square, keep the metal flat in the inside where you need it. So there's a lot of different hammers here that I brought. Um, this hammer here, if you were making a knife, I would use this for a bloodline on the on the knife. You take and put that along the knife and take a, a wooden mallet and beat that in to get your bloodline. That's a little groove in the in the knife. So I brought some of my hammers and and some of the other things that are here. But uh, there's all different types. This hammer here is a unique hammer. This was bought from a guy across the street from Historic Point Bass. And what this hammer does, it's to split metal. If I had a piece of metal, you know, if I had a piece of metal like this right here and wanted to cut it in two pieces, you would take this hammer, get a cherry red, your metal cherry red, take this hammer and put it on there, take a heavier hammer and hit on it to split the metal right on down however far you wanted it to go. It's, we didn't have power band saws or hack saws and all of those good things back in 1840. So you use this. Um, there's a lot of things that, that the blacksmith does in the settlement. There was 13 people in our settlement and they would come over and ask for different things all the time. Draw it out on the sand and then it was up to to me to remember what they drew out and what they wanted and when they needed it by. So I'd like to invite you out to Historic Point Bass. Come on out and see us. We have many tours and activities out there. 
We're a historical site. We'd like to teach you what it was like in 1840 and stop out at one of our events and see us. So appreciate the time and have a good day. some of the skills um, that were done in those days. Um, in the 1840s, the women were responsible for all aspects of the house. That included making rugs, clothing, blankets, as well as all the cooking, etc. And, uh, oh yeah, and laundry. <laughs> Um, and today we're just showing some of the different skills in terms of weaving. This is a rug loom and basically you took pieces of fabric that were torn from old used clothing and you would tear them in strips and this would create a very durable product. Nothing is thrown away. Oh, and, and this is Kathy. Um, also another member of Point Historic Point Bass. Um, we try to demonstrate as many of the skills at the time as possible. Uh, we would also like to invite you to come out to Point Bass and join us in any one of our historic events throughout the year. Um, you get to experience historic life. So thanks for visiting the Historic Point Bass booth and we hope to see you at one of our events in the near future. Hello, my name is Jim and I'm part of the Historic Point Bass. I'd like to welcome you to the Historic Point Bass exhibit at the Wisconsin Rapids Home Show. Currently I'm working on a, on a spindle here and I'll be putting onto the uh, spinning wheel. Right now I'm taking uh, the tenons and I'm using a chisel to get the tenon cut down so they'll fit into the hole. And then it'll be going back onto the back side of this uh, spinning wheel. And I'd like to invite all of you to come out to Historic Point Bass and see some of our exhibits that we have throughout the year. Uh, our next one is uh, Sugar Bush Days on March 25th. The one after that will be in June, and that will be our Pioneer Festival. So I'd like to welcome everyone to come out and visit us on the Historic Point Pass. Thank you for coming. Hello, my name is Julie, and I'm working here at the um, home show for the Historic Point Bass group. I'm also a Master Gardener volunteer. The Master Gardeners are very excited about this year because it is our Wood County Master Gardener um, 20th anniversary. And some of the things that we're going to be doing out here at Point Bass is uh, Pretty exciting. Point Bass Historical Living Group invited us to help with their gardening program in 2012. At that time, there was only the beginnings of a historic vegetable garden. Since then, we have moved the quilt block flower garden from the Marshfield Fairgrounds next to next to the school to the Columbia Schoolhouse. We put in a bird and butterfly habitat between the schoolhouse and the ramp, and we have a certified monarch buddy, butterfly um, habitat next to the Columbia Schoolhouse. We've maintained and improved the period vegetable garden, and we also help with garden-related crafts and information for the ch school children groups. This year we're doing, we're going to be doing more period vegetables for the school children to dig and sensory garden plants for them to experience. 
We are also breaking ground on a new kitchen herb garden near the Wakeley House. Many of the herbs are being moved from the vegetable garden with additions of historically accurate herbs and plants. And we're building a educational display demonstrating the effects of litter on the environment. So I hope that you would come out and see us at one of Point Bass's um, events. And thank you for coming to the home show.